When the boys at Fox International set you a challenge, they really don't mess around. Now the challenge that they've set me for this spring is to try and catch a 30 pound carp from an open access day ticket lake. Now the water that I've chosen is the Cracking Carp Lake here at Angler's Paradise in Devon. Now it's a well-known complex, probably most famous for its massive golden orf, huge catfish and of course eccentric fishery owner Zig Gregorick. Now around eight years ago Zig actually stocked this lake with 25 stunning hand-picked carp, all between 14 and 19 pounds. Now since then those fish have grown on and apparently there's now several fish in this uh, relatively small water, already over 30 pounds and a number of fish that are likely to exceed that weight this year as well. So let's get the rods out, see what the challenge brings. Okay, so we're barely an hour into the quest. I was just about to put my rods out, ready for the night ahead. Um, I've just crept round to the other side of the lake, and right in the very edge I've noticed a little patch of coloured water. Now, I stood there for about five minutes, just trying to see if it was runoff from the land, from the recent rain that we've had, or whether there was a fish feeding there. And after standing there for a little while, watch more and more silk coming up off the bottom and it was clear that there was a fish feeding there and actually as I, as I looked down into the water I could actually make out the shape of a carp. I couldn't see how big it was but it was definitely a, a half decent fish and it would be uh, it'd be great to get ourselves on the scoreboard on the first day. What I've actually done at this stage, I've actually, uh, luckily I had my rods ready, so I've just crept round with one rod, my net, my unhooking mat, just lowered the bait in so if I just uh, bring you round here, you see we've just got the rod on the floor there, on the bait runner, um, and where that rod tip is just poking out beyond those dead reeds there. I'm using a the fluorocarbon main line so it's just hanging down off the rod tip. Now the carp were actually moving about 8 or 10 feet from the bank there. Um, what I couldn't obviously do was fish out beyond them or, or right in amongst them because there would be a huge risk of, of uh, spooking the fish. So uh, I've just dropped the bait in just a few feet from the bank. Now we just have to uh, sit back and see if we can uh, get some early action. Well, unfortunately, that stalking opportunity that we had earlier on today came to nothing. After about 20 minutes of having the bait and the swim, I crept over and had a look, and the water was already starting to clear, so I guess that the fish had moved on fairly quickly. Whether they'd just finished feeding, or if we'd actually spooked them getting the rig in position, I'm not totally sure. Now, the wind's changed totally this evening. It's actually uh, gone from, round from an easterly all the way around to a westerly. Um, so this corner of the lake up to my left here, uh, which was protected from the cold easterly, now got a warm westerly blowing in there. So I'm confident that any carp that was sat up there on the back of that very, very cold wind uh, may now feed this evening. So we've tucked the bait up right in the corner against some cover. Uh, there's a few reed stems there. So we've used the baiting pole to tuck the rig right in, uh, right in amongst it. On my other rod, I've cast out to the island in front of me. Now with a little bit of gentle plumbing around with the lead, I found that it's quite a steep shelf, so I've positioned my bait right at the bottom of the shelf and just uh, put a few extra baits out around it, but not a hell of a lot of bait. Obviously, with the temperature still relatively low, it's all about fishing for one bite. Let's see what the night ahead brings. Okay, so last time I updated our little video blog on our quest for a £30 carp from a day ticket water, we were just getting ready for our first night on the Cracking Carp Lake at Angler's Paradise. Now unfortunately on that night we didn't do any good, stayed up quite late listening for any fish, uh, seeing if I could see anything show, very very quiet, it got really really cold that night as well, actually temperatures dipped back down below freezing, the lake was really really quiet. Now since then I managed to do uh, another day session. And unfortunately the result was exactly the same. I hadn't even seen any fish uh, showing at this point. Now what I've been able to do in the last week or so as I've noticed the temperatures increase is get down a couple times and actually put a little bit of bait in. Now due to the fact that no fish have been caught yet by myself or the other anglers fishing the lake so far this year, I haven't been piling the bait in. I've just been putting a handful on a few different spots just so that as the carp wake up, Hopefully that will just sort of get them used to taking our bait in particular areas. <clears throat> and all I'm doing at the moment is just rotating my baits around those particular spots to try and find where the carp are. Now, I've got down here at first light this morning. Um, for the first time during the campaign, the lake seems to have actually woken up. Um, 
There's lots of fish moving, small fish topping. I've seen two fish show that might have been carp. Now the good news is that both those fish that did top, that looked a bit larger, were right over the top of one of my baited areas. Um, so I've actually managed to get two rigs in position. Um, we've got a 24 hour session ahead of us now. Got good conditions, got the pressure dropping after a long period of high pressure over the last few days. So, fingers crossed. Just thought I'd run you through the rigs that I've been using so far. Now, when I talk to general anglers who are maybe thinking about having to go for a big carp, one of the things that really, really puts a lot of people off is that it's perceived that the rigs have to be really, really complicated to, to catch a carp. This isn't the case. I'm just going to run through what I'm using now, and hopefully, you'll see it's a setup that anyone can tie in the matter of seconds. Um, okay, so let's start at the top of the rig. We're using 15 pound main line, just normal monofilament line. Then we've got a couple feet of tubing. You'll see that all the components I'm using here are quite a dark, muddy type of color. Um, that's to match the bottom of the lake. So we've got about two foot of sinking rig tubing. Then we've got a standard leg clip set up. Now this is actually a fox leg clip and you probably can't see it there but there's actually a peg that goes through the middle and that actually holds that quick change swivel inside the clip um, which means that if a fish goes through a snag for example the lead will discharge very easily um, which is really really important. Now the lead that we've got on there, I've actually got a flat lead because a lot of the spots that I'm fishing are on, uh, are on slopes so I'm using a flat lead that will hopefully hold the rig where we need it. Now I've been using these little, these little quick change swivels here which actually come with the clip. I've been using these for a little while now and they're really, really useful for just changing setups at short notice. So if you want to change your rig quickly, if you've got a fish in the net as well, you can just undo that really, really easily um, without having to break the whole setup down. Now in front of that, we've got an anti-tangle sleeve, which I'll just push over the, uh, the quick change clip there to cast. Now we've got a hook length there of about eight or 10 inches long. It's a dark prototype braid in 15 pounds uh, breaking strain. Now between that lump of putty there and the hook, we've got a distance of about an inch and a half. You'll see that that's peeled back there. So we've got the main boom of the rig is quite stiff. And then the last inch and a half is nice and supple. Now this isn't actually a pop-up. So you might ask why we've got quite a large piece of putty on the hook length there. That's just to keep everything pinned down and out of the way of the carp when they're actually feeding in the swim. Now, at this end, we haven't got any uh, sliding rings or anti-eject systems or anything else like that. There's no wonder rigs in my fishing. I just like to keep it nice and simple. Now, what you'll actually see there is the most simple uh, hair, rig, uh, hair rig of them all. It's a knotless knot. As simple as you can get. Now, what we've actually got there is one of the new Kuro uh, Fox size 8 barbless hooks. Knotless knotted to the 15 pound braid. And then on the hair, I've got a 14 mil SBS Baits M1 Boilie. Now that's a, a meaty red fish mill bait. Now SBS, I've been using their stuff for probably about three or four years now. Built up a really good relationship with them. Um, there's lots of obviously high quality baits out there at the moment, but the, the M1 has produced for the last few years for me. And, and to be honest, it's, it's probably the best carp bait I've ever used. So I can't see myself changing. On the back of that, just to uh, neutralize the weight of the hook, I've got a piece of Enterprise pop-up rubber sweet corn and then a standard hair stop. Now, if that knotless knot rig looks maybe a little bit complicated, I know that in most tackle shops you'll be able to get a ready-made rig that will do exactly the same. I think the point that I'm trying to, uh, that I'm trying to make here is you don't need some hinged rig with loops, swivels and rings everywhere. Just a simple rig will be all that you need to catch big carp. Just come up to have a look in this little shallow corner here. I've seen some activity. Look like some feeding activity right against the uh, marginal reeds here. I'm just going to uh, bring you over because when I come over and had a look right in the margin, absolutely black with tadpoles all the way along the margin for about 10 metres. Spawn and tadpoles absolutely everywhere. Now obviously this is a brilliant feast for the spring carp. Um, this type of sort of uh, stimulation from having so much food around that's gonna sort of bring them out of that winter slumber and get them feeding um, up in the shallow water. The only problem is obviously it's a lot of food for us to compete against as well, which obviously means it's really important that we try and establish the bait that we're uh, putting in on a regular basis now.
conditions for tonight's session are looking absolutely spot on. For the past two weeks we've had very high pressure, easterly winds, cold nighttime temperatures. But during the day today the wind swung right round and we got a big southwesterly. Now at any time of year a big mild southwesterly wind is what any carp angler hopes for. For the last couple of weeks the fish have been held up very very shallow water behind that island at the bottom of the lake there. It took me a few sessions to track them down but the clues were there and eventually we managed to find the fish. Now I think they've been in there feeding on naturals. There's a lot of tadpoles about as I showed you earlier and I think they've been in there feasting on those and they haven't had to come out and eat our bait and risk capture. Now this wind started up sort of mid-afternoon today and it's blowing all the way down the lake against this deeper bank which is very much the sort of dam end of this particular uh, lake. Now it's around six or seven feet in front, of the, uh, in front of the bank there, it shelves off quite quickly. So if we just zoom in over into the corner there, right up tight into that corner, um, it's a very very well known spot on this lake, apparently it's produced some good fish uh, to the anglers that have fished here before. So I've cast the lead across and to avoid any disturbance I've crept round and used the baiting pole to position the rig right in the edge. Now luckily this bank is one of the areas where I've been putting a few baits in anyway so I'm hoping that the fish will be familiar with feeding in that particular area. Now, looking at the Met Office forecast before this session, I knew that these conditions were on their way, so I was expecting to po possibly move down to this end of the lake in preparation of the night. Um, during the day today, I focused on the shallower water again on the, uh, on the back of the wind, um, but while I was sat there earlier, almost minutes after the wind changed, a big pale coloured mirror came right out of the water, tight to the bank, no more than three or four feet from the bank over here, so I've immediately made the move. Let's hope it pays off. Well, after four days at Cracking Carp, we finally managed to uh, get our first bite of the campaign. Just uh, got her in this uh, short-term retention system here. We'll bring her up on the mat. And we'll take a look. actually the uh, first carp of the campaign that we've had. We've been lucky enough to nail our target in, in one go. This cracking common, we'll just let her calm down. She's just been sat in this retention system for a couple minutes, just recovering from the fight. Didn't actually realise how big the fish was when I was playing it, so it was a, a nice surprise when we, when we got her into the net. Just let her calm down. there we have it, that's what can be achieved on a day ticket. We've spent four days at the fishery, this is the first bite, common of £32, absolutely over the moon. Quite a short dumpy fish, caught from the far margin, just the simple tactics that I was talking about earlier on within the video. SBS M1 boily, little pop up on the top, a few pellets and a bit of corn around it. Let's get a slip back. On a spring morning, that's what dreams are made of. £30 common. <laughs> 